Seen some wonderful matches today. I was right out there in the thick of it for SVB Kazakis' match. The atmosphere was amazing. This looks a decent break off. Well, that's arguably the best break off we've seen in the entire tournament. Look at this. The the bunch of balls decimated. Nine remaining in the template, so that's in mid-table. Begging to be potted. As are all the rest of the balls. Couple of rails here to get back on the purple five. It might not be at the, at the end of the match, but right now it feels a little after the Lord Mayor show following that extraordinary drama between Kazakis and SVB. And the match we commentated on, Carl, was also gripping, wasn't it? Tyler Steyer defeating Fedor Gorscht. Tyler Steyer booked a date with Joshua Filler in the next round. So it's not going to get easier. This now balls easy. 1 0 Piado, the defending champion. He's still going strong. Yeah, break and run out. Now, let me tell you how he's got here so far, Carlo Piado. Well, it was all very easy. He played our first match on table one at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. He beat a, a tennis coach from Boca Raton, Florida. Nicolin Dalibor 9-1. Then he overcame Christina to catch 9-1. But then a bump in the road. Lost 9-6 to Joven Bustamante. That sent him to the one lost side of the draw when he beat Hua Chia Chen 9-4. And then <coughs> Petri Makinen 9-4 earlier on today. So five matches played, four victories. And the interesting thing with that is. He won the tournament last year, having also been confined to the one loss side of the draw. Right now, his racks one loss record, 43 for 19 against. And the reason I say that, Naoki Oi's one loss record, 36 racks four, only seven against. Cue ball has found the bucket. It's at the bottom of the pocket. That can happen with this new designed cup break that the professionals are using. We've seen a few nine balls on the break as well. Because of this break, you can see it just comes across. Didn't hit the nine this time. But that does happen a little bit. Marcel Icart having to replace the five ball having removed the template. That cue ball hits the, the point of the middle pocket, Carl, and it would have been pretty much an action replay of the first rack. Now, though, it's Oi who's got the open table, licking his lips.
Landed a little straight. Cue ball's quite close to the rail. He's down pretty quick, so he must have enough angle. Well, he has to play in the left centre. That's never an ideal scenario, but he will be fine for this to tie this match up. All very straightforward. The only thing that prevented Carlo Biardo going 2 0 ahead was that scratch on the break. And what he left was a very simple dish up. And so, the man from Japan, Naoki Oi, is back on level terms. And you get the feeling this one will be, much like our last couple of matches on table one, keenly contested. Naoki Oi's run to this stage has been the definition of serene. He beat Matt Williamson in the first round, 9-0. Then Tafen Tabor, 9-1. He overcame the 2012 Whirlpool Masters champion, Karol Skaversky, 9-3 in winner's qualification. And earlier today, he played Tafen Tabor again, and this time won 9-2. See the Oi break. Is he playing for the one or the wing ball? Playing for the one. Two ball. Doesn't look like it's going to be potable, so it's going to be a safety shot from Oi. Option of the push is always available after the break, but we won't be seeing that here. That only really happens usually when the players are hooked on the lowest ball. Carl, what we will be seeing is Chris Melling in the last 16. He's just completed a very comprehensive 9-1 victory over Bada Alawadi from Kuwait. So Chris Melling is through. So too Roland Garcia. He's beaten Wojciech Shevchik 9-6. They move on into the penultimate day of competition tomorrow together with Mario He, who's defeated Mustafa Alma from Turkey 9-5. So three players through to the, the last 16, and yet the, the last 64 round isn't over yet. One match still going there, Chang Junlin. He leads Skyler Woodward 6-4 on table two, where in general today, the going has been really, really slow. Yeah, not having a shot clock won't help, because sometimes the players, you know, you can waste a bit the time overthinking certain situations and that's what pressure does that's what the, the environment quite funny really because the crowds around table one and two are still there but they are not as deep as they was 20 minutes ago when SVB was on there I'm sure they've gone out for a drink and a little bit of food I'm sure they'll be back well the vibe when SVB goes out of a tournament in America. It's rather like the vibe when Ronnie O'Sullivan goes out of a snooker tournament. It's a big story, but there's always a, a tinge of sadness. There you can see confirmation on table two. Chang Junlin, 6-4 up on Skylar Woodward, who has got Moscone Cup implications on his mind. As does Oscar Dominguez. He trails 6-2. Trying to make something happen in here. A little bit of news for you if you want to stick with this stream after this match is over. You're in for yet another treat. On table one, it will be Tyler Steyer, another chasing the Moscone Cup. Up against the first man from Europe to book his place on the European team in Las Vegas in December. Joshua Filler, Steyer Filler coming up on this table after this. Can he cut this ball on the side? No, he can't. So it's the hook. And that is a fine job indeed. 
Oh, he's in trouble. Can go two rails. But how do you get it safe? There's not a lot of landing space. So does he have to land this on top of that two ball? This is like a jumbo jet landing on a mountain airstrip. And no casualties there. Although the two has been left. Here's a trivia question for you, Carl, which involves you. When you go to the final of the US Open, can you remember who you beat in the last 32? If you can't remember, I definitely won't be able to. <laughs> hmm. No, of course I can't remember. Why would I remember something like that? I'm going to say Skylar Woodward. I'll try and find out, actually, for my own curiosity. <laughs> Talking of Skylar Woodward, he's just lost another rack over on table two. Chang Jung Lin, 7-4. Chang, what a quality player he is. be no surprise to see him lifting the trophy in a couple of days time and the man who still holds the trophy still going strong can be had or retain a title didn't play the bank played the cue ball and just look at the cue ball this cue ball is sickening it's so good I'll let you off with a trivia question of course it was a different format then it was pure double elimination, wasn't it? So there was no last 32. Well, I didn't even know that, so <laughs> what chance have I got? Your blushes are spared. Surprise, always taking his time here because how do you hit the two? Well, you just don't. What he's tried to do there is just make the three not potable past the six. So at least Carlo's got to try and get from the two to the three on the opposite side of the table. Not the worst of ideas because, <laughs> well, he was in a world of trouble. Carlo's very clever, very. Very devious on the pool table. Often play shots where other people don't spot. Is this going to be one of them instances? He could play a good safety, lock up the cue ball behind the four. To be a tactical maestro at pool, which Biardo is, you need to be a, a lateral thinker. It's akin to chess with balls. think outside the box or the break box as the case may be yeah is he looking at some sort of safety shot while chasing the nine ball somewhere
There's the safety. Locks the cue ball tight on that four ball. This is going to be difficult to hit as well. Could maybe go two rails. If he can get that way, he could even pot it in that very pocket. You're right though, glued up against the pink. Lots of juniors here today to compete in the SVB Junior Open. And that's one lesson you would give all of them. Don't just play safe, play the safest. contact made on the two but no cushion hit yeah if you're wondering why he's not balling and after contact the ball must strike a rail or if you pocket a ball that's fine just stops the players rolling up onto a ball which you can do in the game of snooker you don't have to hit a rail I often wonder what snooker would be like Phil if you had to hit a rail after contact well there is one world ranking event every year which is rather controversial, actually. Called the, the Snooker Shootout, where they are 10-minute matches. And whoever's in front after 10 minutes wins. Just 10 minutes, that's a real sprint for Snooker. And the rule is in place there, you have to hit a cushion. And quite often, players forget. What connection is the speed snooker shootout and myself Phil a little trivia question for you mm, well the first one was held in Blackpool your hometown yeah that's not the answer I was looking for <gasps> it's a little bit more difficult than that Phil come on more tenuous go on then Carl I won the speed pool tournament in Indonesia it's a bit of a connection not in pressure one bit well I thought my my connection was better the one about the hometown yeah we play the first few shootouts in the famed Tower Circus in Blackpool which has held a Moscone Cup yeah what a great venue that was as well been there to play in the Moscone Cup been there to watch the snooker shootout and I've took my boy to the circus there Yeah, the circus there has been going for years. The most famous character in it was Charlie Caroli, the clown. These two on clowns, they're both deadly serious. And I think it will be hard to split them. Yeah, last year's semi-final that these two players played was a classic, wasn't it? Or oh, he led that match. Biardo, what a fight back he, he did last year in that semi-finals. What an achievement it would be to successfully defend. Of course, he's still got an awful lot of pool to go before then. From here, he has to win this match and four others against top-class, world-class opposition. But I think he's trending in the right direction, and certainly his break-off is. At the start of the week, he was struggling with that, not now. So, let me give you some other scores. Just one match still going in the last 64. Chang Jun Lin is now on the hill against Skylar Woodward at 8-4. In the last 32, Lee Van Corteza leads Copen Yi 5-4. Max Lechner, 6-3 up on... Giannis Suto Camino. Co Copin Chung, 6 3 up on Neil Svein. Yanni Uski, who came into the last 32 on the back of two consecutive 9 0 victories. He's 7 7 with Abdullah Al Yusuf. 
an excellent catchy 5 2 up on Duong Quoc Huang from Vietnam. And just a word on that last 64 match on table two. If Chang Jun Lin does seal victory, that really does strengthen Oscar Dominguez's claim on an automatic spot in the US Moscone Cup team because he was ahead of Skylar Woodward in the rankings anyway. He was number two coming into this tournament. But of course, he could still be scuppered, Dominguez, by the likes of Greg Hogue and Tyler Steyer. Not inconceivable, though, at the end of today, we will know the three USA players automatically qualified. We know one already, Shane Van Boning. We might know the other two. No Moscone Cup thoughts for Biardo or Naoki Oi. Mind you, if ever... Asia had a, a team in a match like that. These two could well feature. And what a formidable continental outfit that would be, Team Asia, Carl. Yeah, kind of glad I'm not playing if that ever happens. I don't want to face them boys, would you? Carlos probably looking at a combination here. It can be made, it's not dead set. I think that's why it's walked around now, just to a bit of feel of the shot. Oh, he plays the bank and misses it. <coughs> oh, it was like a greyhound around the table there to see whether a gap had been left to chip the one ball into the pocket. I don't think it has. Gap was there. But for Oi, collision with the seven could have been harmful. In the end, he's okay. He's got a clear shot on the two. swing the cue ball round to the table in between the brown seven and the black eight. That's the gap he's playing for. He needs to slow down. Oh, he's going to be happy with that one. Good shot. On table two, Chang Junlin at the table with just the nine ball left. The decisive nine ball.
He misses the bank. Skyler Woodward has life. It's 2-2 on table one, of course. Drama, call Drama. Yep, he's still alive. 8-5 if you can slot this home. We've seen them comebacks before. Winner breaks as well. The break's a lot tougher. In fairness, needs to stay still. Is it there? Oh, it's not there. He's missed that wire by a way. There's the handshake. He's seen enough. Chang Jung Lin. He's through. Skylar Woodward is out. And that means the door to Moscone Cup selection could be open. Could be open for Tyler Steyer and for Greg Hogue from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Not very well known, but he's beaten Omar Al Shaheen today. And if he could possibly go on and beat Mark Bosch on table 19 shortly, suddenly Greg Hogue, the Oklahoman, could have his dreams become reality. I was reading online when he was 15 years of age. He played Willie Moscone, who was then 70, in an exhibition in Tulsa. It was a nine ball exhibition, and a 15 year old Greg Hogue beat the great man 5 3. Now, all these years later, could he possibly be in the Moscone Cup? That what a fairy tale that would be. Yeah, that is awesome. What a story that is you've pulled out the back there, Philip. went over and watched the end of that match as well with Omar because he's he's a funny character he's Greg Hogue he's, he's a unique individual so I wanted to see what he was about I wanted to see if it was all fun and games he can play the last four racks that he won in that match he played awesome he can play he doesn't look like he can play he's got funny mannerisms around the table but he knows what he's doing As does Carlo Biardo. What a sweet pot that was. The cue was delivered so well. Yeah, he possesses all the, the attributes, and that's why he's the defending champion. Plays his own style of game. He's got a, he's got a funny little cue action as well as Biardo. Kind of stabbed his way around the table, but the biggest attribute he possesses is his cue ball. His cue ball control is brilliant. Well, he's won a couple of titles in 2022. The US Open 8 ball, lower profile than this, but still takes some winning. And he also won the 10 ball singles in the Southeast Asian Games this year. In 2017, Cole, when he won the World Nine Ball Championship, he was voted the Philippines Sportsman of the Year. like this to keep rolling it's not so he's got to he's got to come twice across but the angle he would like would be kind of where the eight ball is so he's got to just come above the eight ball yeah there you see it coming back over he's got to play a good shot here though he's got to really cue this well he's got to get back up for the seven Does he draw it and try and go to the right hand side of the eight as we look at it now? Or does he play a high ball and swing it around? That's what he's looking at now. Come one rail over towards that line where his cue was. Maybe he has to go that way because if he goes forward, he might hit the eight or three rails. Got to get into the cue ball here. 
avoid the scratch. Oh my word. Just look at that for the shot. A liquid pool. Get that on the highlight reel. He's played like a champion in this rack. In goes the nine ball. Nothing more than he deserved. For the third time, Carlo Biardo hits the front. It was 1-0, it was 2-1, and now it is 3-2. So, just last 32 matches to give you the scores on now. The last 64 is in the books. Lee Van Corteza leads Copigny 7-4. Max Lechner, 6-3 up on Jonas Suto Camino. 7-4 for Copin Chung over Niels Sfayan. 8-7 for Abdullah Al Yusuf of Kuwait over Yanni Uski. Al Yusuf on the hill. Eklan Kachi, 6-2 up on Duong Kwok Huang. Shi Chia Chen, who beat Alvin Aushin a little earlier yesterday, in fact, in the tournament. He's on the hill against Oscar Dominguez at 8-3. Carlo Biardo we know about. And Konrad Yuzhushin, he's on the hill against Sanyan Pilovanovic at 8-6. What a difference the way he's breaking, Carl, and the way we saw Fedor Gorsh break earlier on. Yeah, consistently potting the one in the side is a lot harder than it looks. If you play pool, if you've got access to a table, trade out, put the nine on the spot with a template from the break box and see how hard that actually is. It's not easy. Another match has gone hill hill. Yoni Uski has won the 16th rack against Abdullah Al Yusuf. 8 8. That's on table 21. Yeah, in his last two matches, he's not had this type of pressure. He's gone 9 0, 9 0. And now he's got a hill hill. Table 23, Alexander Kazakis has had little time to celebrate that famous win over Shane Van Boning. He's back into the melting pot on table 23 against Thomas Kaplan from Poland. Perfect angle here for Carlo. Low off the one rail, probably. Come back down towards the six, that kind of route. Couldn't spin two rails. Yeah, he spanned two rails. Played for the purple five on the right. Inside pocket. Love watching his game, Phil. I really like watching Carlo go about the table layout time and time again. Yeah, he looks after himself, doesn't he, Carlo Biardo? 38 years of age. He'll actually be 39 in a couple of weeks' time. Looks younger than that. Not a grey hair in sight. He's given a few opponents grey hairs, though.
never happy to be plain ball warriors, the Filipinos, always playing with side, always playing inventive and effective shots. This is impressive for me. For the first time, he has a two-rack gap. Carlo Biado leads Naoki Oi 4-2. What's also impressive for me about Biado, Carl, is the way he came through. Basically, he was from Rosario in La Union, and he started playing pool when he was 13 years of age. He actually worked as a caddy on the Villamore Air Force Base golf course there and he used to play pool in the evenings, became very proficient at it and soon realised that he could earn a nice few quid, either in money matches or in tournaments, and it's gone from there. That was 25 years ago when he took up the game, and now he's been a world champion, he's been a US Open champion. As for Naoki Oi, well, he's been a, an internet sensation with some of those interviews he's done after victories. Always makes me chuckle. I think he would be pretty animated if he won this match tonight and we interviewed him. But he's got a long way to go and a tough task ahead. It's a dry break, a little bit thin on the one ball. If you, if you hit it a little bit too thin, you can see where the cue ball goes. It goes lower down near the corner pocket and that often results in a bad split. Oh, he's not got a lot to work with here. Looks quite messy. That's why he's locking the cue ball up on them two balls. Nicely done. I think he was trying to break the eight away from the four, so the four ball went a little later on. working things out I can tell you Lee Van Corteza on the hill against Copigny at 8-4 what a day's work that would be Carl victories over Jason Shaw and then Copigny both of them comfortably yeah it's a tough section that Corteza's had He's another one, he's a little bit like Piado, quite an unusual cueish, sort of stabs his way around the table, but Filipinos, they play the game different, don't they? They see things that those mere mortals don't. I don't see a tempt in here. Yeah, it was tight. Oh, he's going to break the ball out. He didn't want that. That was a bit of an insurance policy later on. Now, Yukio will be delighted. Abiado has broke these balls away. Look at this, here comes the cue ball. The new cue, you could see with his arm. Not been a great day for Team America. We lost SVB. We lost Skylar Woodward. We lost Oscar Dominguez. So Tyler Steyer will be playing Joshua Filler. And Greg 
Hogue. What a story. Greg Hogue. If Greg Hogue can beat Mark Bosch from table 19, he may well just qualify for the Moscone Cup fill. What a story that would be. A complete unknown in professional pool on the circuit. Yes, and he's hardly played any tournaments in the qualifying process. He won a small event at the Sandcastle in Edison, New Jersey. That gave him some points, and here he's picking up major points. As soon as those two balls were split, Carlo Biardo anticipated his fate. Oi, sticking in there. It's now only 4-3, Biardo's lead. When Carlo Biardo did win the, the World Nine Ball Championship in 2017. Who did he beat in the final? A certain fellow countryman by the name of Roland Garcia, who's also through to the last 16. He's beaten Wojciech Shevchik a while ago now, 9-6. So the Filipino is doing pretty nicely, thank you. As for the other scores, Max Lechner 7-3 upon Jonas Suto Camino. Koping Chung 7-4 upon Neil Spion. It remains Yoni Uski and Abdullah Al Yusuf. 8-8. Well it doesn't. Yoni Uski, just this second, has spotted the decisive nine ball. The thin is through. The Kuwaiti is out. Breaking in this match so far has been very good, but that turned out to be dry. He can snip this one in, Biardo. You can just see the potting angle, just a little bit of the yellow one ball sticking out. Controlling the cue ball is where. It may cause some problems for Carlo. Another result call. Konrad Jozushin has beaten Sanyan Pelovanovic 9-7. He had four break and run outs in that match. Pelovanovic tried his level best to fight back into it. But in the end, Jozushin crossed the line. And we've talked an awful lot today about the US Moscone Cup situation. If one of the middle-ranked Europeans were to win this title, the likes of Yuzhushin or Janiuski, someone like that, suddenly they would vault into the European Moscone Cup picture. Mario He falls into that category as well. Obviously, he's going to go for the pot. So let's see what he can do with this cue ball. Well, did he 
you see the cue ball, it must have hit the point three or four times. Lucky to stay up. How many times did it hit the points here? He played that with left-hand side to promote the pot. But, of course, that took the cue ball closer to the pocket. And you're right, Carl. He was looking disgusted as though he'd had bad luck. But, OK, deprived of ideal position on the two. Yes, but that could so easily have dropped. our commentary box Joshua Filler is practicing in readiness for the next match here on table one against Tyler Steyer Didn't go in clean. But they're always awkward then. That shot there is one of the worst shots on a pool table. You can't see the pocket. You know you've got to hit it thin. So after fractionally avoiding the scratch and then potting that really good two ball. Biodo now on the threshold of a, a two rack lead again. A few times in his early appearances on these streaming tables, he dropped short of position, especially when coming off cushions, but that's been ironed out now. Used to the table. And this is a man who is used to winning. And he's certainly on course to win this one. He leads Naoki Oi 5-3. I can tell you, Lee Van Cortez, Carlo Biardo's fellow countryman, has completed victory over Copigny. What a day for Cortez. Max Lechner on the hill against Jonas Suter Camino at 8-3. 7-5 now, Coping Chung and Niels Fyan. 7-4. It is Eklund Kachi over Huang Kwok Huang. Early stages. In fact, no racks on the board for FSR. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz against Wu Kunlin. John Mora against Chang Junlin. Or Gregory Hogue against Mark Bosch. On table 23, though, Alexander Kazakis. He was on a high after beating Shane Van Boning. Now needs to get level headed again and put all of his efforts into his last match of the day. Well, he's two on up on Thomas Kaplan. So this is just a quick look over onto table two. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz against the little known player from Chinese Taipei, Wun Kun Lin. Wu Kun Lin. Can't tell you Gregory Hogue. It's one of the opening rack against Mark Bosch. If you're into fairy tale sporting stories, you'll be keenly monitoring that one. Have you seen Wu play before, Carl? Not, not really. When I was over there watching Greg earlier on, he was on one of the tables near. I was having a little, 
a little look, so can't say. I've good shot there from Sanchez. Have to turn the ball over. The going really has been quite pedestrian on table two today. This is only the fourth match on that table. Bear in mind we started at 10 o'clock local time. And it will be the final match on that table because there's no more action to be placed there. There is one match in the last 32 yet to begin. And that's a, a cracker between Joshua Filler and Tyler Steyer. But that will come on to table one at the conclusion of Biardo and Oi. By the way, some more details on the Konrad Juzhushin Sanyan Pulovanovic match. Good standard there. Juzhushin ran four racks from the break. Pulovanovic ran three. As always, we'll keep you right up to date with all of the scoring developments on table two. You can see this game, of course, on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel, as you can all of the, the table two action. Now, though, both players back in the arena on table one. Biardo looking to press home the advantage. Didn't hit them too clever. From the moment he made contact there with the blue two ball, it was patently obvious the cue ball wasn't going to get behind the eight as intended. for the safety shot often players look for a wall of balls or a cluster that just gives them a higher percentage of laying the hook and I think always oh, done okay there first match tomorrow on table one just a confirmation it's gonna be Lee Van Cortesa versus Chris Melling. Like it. <coughs> I've described the Filipinos collectively already this week as the kicking kings. And that was another example. Time and again. When they escape from a hook. They do so precisely, perfectly. Can 
hard to see how he's going to get this safe. He's kind of just guaranteeing the hit. Probably trying to play some sort of distance shot. Yeah, that's what he's tried. Needs to miss the six. Well, at least it's bumped it that side. Could have been worse. This is a little bit of a similar feel to the Gorse Tyler Steyer match we did before, Phil. Bit of a slow burner. Kind of waiting to see if he can pull it back, but Biardo just keeps stretching out in front. And we know how that match finished before, don't we? Yeah, I do see the similarity. I will say, I think so far the scoreline reflects who has been the better player. Biardo has produced some really good pool. Not that Oi has made a, a load of glaring mistakes or anything like that. talking before Carl about the the Filipinos and how they play the game and they think so clearly about what to do and their tactical awareness is second to none another example there they are visionaries aren't they they really are they just they just play the game different it's hard to explain why or how but they just do they do things different they see shots that others don't. Well, he's going to have to come with something good here. I mean, just hitting the two would be a start. ball unfortunately just cut the point another result for you Max Lechner has beaten Jonas Suto Camino 9-4 so we have two Austrian players in the last 16, even though Albin Auschen, at the top of the tree when it comes to Austrian pool, has been eliminated. Zakas has kept up the form from where he left off with his great win before. He's 3 1 up over Kaplan. Niels Feyen clawing back the match now. Trails 7 6 to Ko Ping Chung. Ko Ping Chung, well, his older brother lost. Just a little while ago, Coping is out. He lost to Cortez. The way he played that cue ball told us immediately that the the purple five will pass the nine ball to the middle pocket. Has to be treated with respect, though. This, especially with hampered queuing. And now six three, very much on the cards.
played that with a little left top just to get that cue ball coming back down in a straight line and he's perfect this for a three rack lead and I don't know about you Carl but I really like what I see nothing flash from Carlo Biardo just functional excellent when it comes to tactics <laughs> clear thinking hard to beat he leads Naoki Oi 6-3 Ko Ping Chung 7 6 over Neil Spine, as Carl said. Eklund Kachi still on the hill against Duong Kwok Huang at 8 4. 2 0 Francisco Sanchez Ruiz over Wu Kun Lin over on table two. John Mora has taken the opening rack against Chang Chun Lin. John Mora from Canada, great story. He was a, a right handed player, hurt his shoulder. Now he started playing left handed in a world class way. Brilliant. Mark Barstabosch, he's 2 1 up now on Gregory Hogue after losing the first rack. And Alexander Kazak is 3 1 up on Thomas Kaplan. So all matches in the last 32 are either complete or underway, apart from Joshua Fuller against Tyler Steyer, which is next here on the main table. Eight balls blocking the path, can't pot it, can have to play a push. But at least he made the one ball, that was a lot better that break. Looks to be a tricky push out at the minute. Because obviously wherever he pushes to, over to the left of the pot. So he's, is he rolling up to the top rail for a kick? Well, he's left a piece of this ball. I think Oi will play this. I think he'll just play it into the floor and get the cue ball, cue ball rather, back to where it is now. The only problem with this is you're going to leave an easy kick. So has Oi thought about that? if he's hooked on all the ball if he is he can still kick off the back rail just thinking Carl there's a very good likelihood that we will see a new name on the Barry Berman trophy this year for the US Open Carlo Biardo's name already there so to Joshua Filler majority of the players who are reaching the last 16 have yet to win this wonderful event Gonna be an easy shot for Oi if he wants to just split the balls. You can roll the object ball, the blue two over to the left, send the cue ball over to the right. Just to put a figure on what I was saying there, eight players are through to the last 16 already and none of them have won this tournament before no i think it's all is it only biardo and phil that are left that have won the event is that what yeah i think that's it Joshua Filler's going to be playing Tyler Steyer. Josh is actually just practicing about. 
15 feet to line on Phil's left. Practicing the break is. Carlo can kick this ball in. Very good at that shot, you know. Anytime he's got one of them one railers where you've got to kick it in and slide around the table, seems to perform it at a high level. I think he can just see enough of this three ball. Yeah, he was looking at the path of the cue ball anxiously. It's just about had enough juice, as you can see from that camera angle. Cue ball's going to be travelling. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is the type of shot where he excels. He just finds the right angle. Left high school early. Did Carlo Biardo to pursue his career in pool. But even though he left education, he's a master of geometry. Masterful in that regard. The matchroom boffins have been hard at work, working out the, the European standings for the Moscone Cup. And we can officially tell you, if you didn't know already, if you hadn't done the sums, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz over on table two at the moment, taking on Wu Kun Lin. He will be in the US battle, going into battle for Europe. Here, battling away, Carlo Biardo and looking mighty fine. Yeah, so just to repeat what I said there before, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz will be in the European team to take on the US in the Moscone Cup at Bally's Casino on the famed Las Vegas Strip from November the 30th to December the 3rd. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz will join the other automatic qualifiers so far, Joshua Filler. That's a good one-two punch. Well, he's a rookie. He's never played in a Moscone Cup, so Team Europe will have a rookie in their team. Yeah, he's a rookie in terms of the Moscone Cup, undoubtedly, and that's uh, a different environment to anything he's experienced before. But in terms of individual accomplishment over the last couple of years, he fully deserves to be there, doesn't he? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I felt two, two three months ago, I think, we was at one of the events, and... I think I mentioned he'll, he'll definitely qualify. You can kind of just get a feel of it, can't you, when a player's on the mad one and winning tournaments, going deep. If the Philippines had a geographical relocation to either North America or Europe. I think Carlo Biardo would play in the Moscone Cup. I've been very impressed with the way he's performed so far here. It's not been sensational or fireworks, anything like that, but Although he's exasperated there, generally speaking, he's been precise and I think most importantly, he's been clever. He prides himself on his cue ball, so hitting the green six there will annoy him. 
He'll be fuming inside. Could have been worse. Could have had no shot. At least you can still pop the ball. Positioning his feet there, I noticed. I think a little further away from the table. Needs the cue ball to stop. Yeah, when you don't get the cue ball where you want, you start to chase position. So it was the previous shot that was the bad one, not that one. Wasn't his best either, was it? No, he's got a healthy lead. It's a big rack. He's to get on the hill. Don't want to start causing yourself headaches now, do you? The one word you rarely associate with Carlo Biodo when it comes to safety play is clumsy. But that was clumsy. Ko Ping Chung is the first man on the hill. 8 7 over Niels Fayan. Eklund Kapchi still battling away. That match is. I think it's 8 6. It is call. It was 8 4 to Kapchi. Duong from Vietnam refusing to go quietly. Going back to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, it's a beautiful feeling when. You know, when, when it's all been confirmed and he will know he's in the team now. So coming into this event, obviously winning this event is your priority. But getting in the team, it, it takes a huge weight off your shoulders. You know, you're delighted. You've been told you're in. You're going to Vegas. Yes, and by getting into the European Moscow and Cup team, he follows in the footsteps of his good pal, Mentor in many respects, David Al Cady. Greg Hogue. He trails 3 1 over Mark Bosch. He needs to win that match to give himself hope of automatic spot in the team. Biardo's faltering in this rack, isn't he, Phil? He just took his foot off the pedal a little bit. Wasn't easy. Yeah, when he hit this, I thought he'd hit it thick. That's exactly how it turned out. Although, when the, the five ball hit the jaws of the pocket, he looked surprised that it stayed on the table. And the one thing about Oi, even though he's well behind, it's not because he's missed pots.
wants an angle, doesn't want to land straight on the seven, any angle will do, that is fine. The one thing I worry about there, Ukiyoi, and it was displayed on that last shot, on pressure balls, he does have a tendency to, to dip the shoulder into it. You could possibly see it here. The eight down the rail shouldn't be an issue. Just a quick update on the junior event, the SVB Junior Open, 64 juniors started. The playing single elimination raised to sevens. And there at the last 16 stage, there is five players that have qualified for the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Semi-finals at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Khalid Al Galmadi, remember him from the European Open. He beat Skylar Woodward, 17 years of age. He's into the quarterfinals. No surprise there. Khalid looked a world-class player, a polished player at all ages. By the way, while we were talking about the juniors, the man is already established in the game. Neu Kioi, he's back to trailing only 7-4. The the Ardo mistake was jumped upon. He yeah, looked quite tired there, sat in his chair, I thought. New cure. Joey Tate, the man who nearly beat SVB earlier on. Well, he's been beaten in the junior event. That junior event, it is stacked. It is not an easy tournament to win. Not a direct pot available on the two, but the 2-8 combo is sitting up and begging to be knocked in. And from that, big things could happen. Oh, not good. Not good, oi. I used the word in the previous rack call. I'll use it again there. That was clumsy. Yeah, it was clumsy. Very clumsy indeed. talking about the the juniors I'm just watching a, a, a lovely interaction here Joshua Filler practicing away and he's just a, a rack with one of the junior players the young man looks absolutely over the moon good on you Josh yeah if you're on Instagram follow me on Instagram it's just my name Cowboys I'm gonna put a picture of that on my story so if you want to see it head over to my instagram now and i'm also going to put another picture on do you see that young seven-year-old who's wearing the massive shoes phil yeah absolutely Still can't keep my eyes off that practice table. What a, a great thing for the youngster to be able to practice with Josh Filler. You'll never forget that. Yeah, that's the beauty of what this has done. You know, it's brought the juniors into this arena. The playing on tables next to former champions, future champions, legends. And, and now Josh is just having a game with a young kid. A young kid, by the way, who's been here all day. I've been noticing him practicing he loves it 
And Josh himself, only six or seven years removed from being a junior also. Now he's very much the, the senior, the big man on campus. Yeah, the, the young man who's playing with Josh right now. I seen him earlier on. I was going to Starbucks, so I noticed he had his SVB top on that they're all wearing for the event. And I said, oh, how'd you get on, pal? He went, I lost 7-0. I said, all right, it's always next year, pal. <laughs> well... There's always next year for the loser of this match. We thought it would be Naoki Oi, but he's now 7-5 down and renewed hope. Now, there's that practice frame I was telling you about. Josh Filler. What a great ambassador for the sport. It's only 10 or 15 minutes of his time, but how gracious he's being doing this. Don't, don't be missing them, Josh. You can't be missing them nine balls. Oh, he's taking the Michael out of you, Josh. That's 1-0. Oh, good scenes, good scenes there. Unscrew your cue, buddy. You've beat him. Yeah, that's the second high five that Josh has given that lad. Gets a lot of bad press, does Josh, but... Nice guy. That's a good break. He's going to have to do something juicy with this two ball, though. Maybe he could billiard the four ball in. Controlling the two is difficult. Safety is quite easy. You can swing the ball around, get it towards the five. Gregory Hogue Moscone Cup dream is fast receding. He's 5 1 down to Mark Bosch, And in this winner breaks format, Bosch has one enormous advantage. His break off when it's working is devastating. Gregory goes on to lose that match. He's going to need a wild card pick off JJ. European legend out. Neil Sfyan has been beaten 9 8 by Ko Pin Chung. So Ko, one of three brothers involved in this tournament, and he's gone the deepest. Also, Eklund Kachi. He's beaten Duong Kwok Wang. 9-6. Good things can happen hitting this ball full. Not today, though. 7-5, oi, at the table. Biados fell off the pace here a little bit, hasn't he? He's just... He's not really closed this match out like he usually does. There you can see Johan Chua on the left of the screen. Talented young Filipino pool player. Just uploaded the picture, Phil, on my Instagram of the young boy with them big shoes on so he can reach the table. Genius idea. I think you could have done with some of them back in the snooker days. Absolutely. Oh, dear me. And after that, Naoki Oi could do with a lift. The two ball going astray. That could hurt. Hurt in a major way. He was so scared of contacting the three ball with his cue. That's put unwanted spin 
on the cue ball and forced the mistake. Geometry teacher finding the gap again. And when he gets into a position like this, he's so astute, you can't imagine he's going to foul it up. Again, the cue ball has let him down because he's landed straight. He needed an angle there. An angle was guaranteed. Let me down after bigging him up in such a way and praising him about his positional play being so on the button. And then he does that. It is retrievable. But now power will be required. And with power comes the possibility of miscalculation. I've just had an idea, Phil. This could turn into a bit of a little undercover reporting from where I'm. So I'm going to do a little video. A lot of the pool fans don't know what the great, the legend Phil Yates looks like. I might do a little video, show the fans our view, where we're sat. Don't post it until after nine o'clock, though. After the watershed. Come on, call out. Yeah necessary traction on the cue ball down it goes and from there he's done really really well four pots away from getting on the hill Yeah, he's done well there, hasn't he? Done very well indeed. The legend Phil Yates is now on the story. Head over to my Instagram to see what the voice looks like. Still not happy though, is he? He's landed straight, but he's okay. He can just, could even leave the cue ball there, pull it back a foot, whatever. matches okay it was 2-2 but Biardo has always been for me the better player and yet the way things can go in this game at the end or we could still get the verdict but if Biardo can tuck this rack away he'd be looking very good indeed Three up with four to play. Yeah, I think he'll just be <laughs> doing everything in his power to close this match out now. I think it's a match he would rather forget. goes in a little thick but from that angle pocket will always swallow the ball and the simple nine and he's finally got himself on the hill yes there it goes he's not there yet there will be no complacency he will be taking nothing for granted he's far too experienced for that 
but Naoki Oi now has no room for manoeuvre. Possible four racks left. The Japanese star has to win them all. Just looking down the annals of this great championship, of course it began, as Carl said, in 1976. The inaugural winner was Mike Siegel. For the early years, it was dominated by American players until in 1994, Efren Reyes captured the title, beating Nick Varner in the final in Chesapeake, Virginia. One good break. Nine balls tracking, but it's not going to go in. It's going to be dry, so our defending champion still got work to do. More misery for Gregory Hogue. He trails 6 1 against Bite the Bush. <laughs> Chang Jung Lin, he's 4 1 up over John Mora. Chang Jung Lin, oh, he would have been many people's pick to win this title. Always sort of goes deep, doesn't he, filling these big majors? He's, he's a proper player. Hard as nails. Mind you, so is Biardo. A fact of which Naoki Oi has been reminded over the last 13 racks. you it has been a match where although the standard has been good we have seen a few dry breaks cropping up that has been a constant feature throughout the day indeed throughout the, the four days of competition here on table one Going into the rail first. Oh, he needs a lot of love here, doesn't he? And that's okay. He's still in this match. I know he needs four racks, but something about an 8 6 where it feels nearly like a hill hill. Well, many matches have been won from 8 6 down. I think the excitement of the SVB Kazakis matches took it out of the crowd. It was packed over there before. A brilliant atmosphere. ball blocking the path to the potting angle on the one but the one is so close to the pockets cushion first is available
So too is position on the two, and now the table opens up. Yeah, he'll know he's, he'll know he's still in this game. Gotta take care of this rack first, of course. You can see Kazakus just in the distance. He's 5 4 up over Kaplan. Gregor Oak has won another rack, it's now 6 2. Chang has also won a rack 5 1. It stays there, and the tip of Nayuki's cue hits the carpet. He can't quite believe that hasn't dropped. He didn't hit it well, though. Only himself to blame. That wasn't an equipment failure. It was a player failure. Look at this. Yeah, how on earth has he missed this one? Looks in all the way. But it stays over the pocket. So Biado has got six balls left to book a place into the final 16 and keep the hopes alive of retaining the title that he won last year and also beating the Ukiyoi again. Beat him last year in the semis. Yes, that was 11-9. It was hard fought. This not quite so hard fought, but he'll be relieved to cross the line nevertheless. Where's the cue ball, Phil? Where's the cue ball? What has he done here? What on earth has Carlo Biardo just done? The last four or five racks, his cue ball has started to wobble. And he's not got the cue ball where he wanted. Something he prides his game on, but to do that, Phil. If Carlo Biardo loses this match and consequently loses the title because of that, he might have sleep deficit. I'm sure Naoki Oi, who's now got a second wind, can't quite believe it. jacked up always lands where you don't want it Tweaked on a little bit of side there to keep the cue ball in mid table. What a time to scratch from what was for. Carlo Biardo, an elementary shot. The match continues. Naoki Oi isn't finished yet. He thought he was, but he isn't. It's 8-6, and of course, he gets to break off in rack 15. So the number of matches in the last 32 dwindling down now. Francisco Sanchez-Ruiz, if you're just joining us, 
he has been mathematically confirmed as the, the number two player to qualify for Europe in the forthcoming Moscow Cup. So FSR will make his debut for Europe in the game's highest profile event. Well, he's in action on table two at the moment, and it's 3-3. Sanchez Ruiz and Wu Kunlin. Actually, as I speak, Sanchez Ruiz has taken a 4-3 lead. Chang Jun Lin, he's 5-1 up on John Mora. Mark Bajtabosh, 7-2 up on Gregory Hoag. Alexander Kazakis, conqueror of Shane Van Boning earlier today. He's 6-4 up on Thomas Kaplan. Nothing doing there. <coughs> to the delight of Piado. But he's still got work to do. It's a messy layout, isn't it? He'll be playing a push out for a shot. Carlo's got to stay in the right frame of mind here. He knows he should be sat, sat in Starbucks with a coffee and a piece of cake. This match should be over. Now, I know it's getting late on the other side of the Atlantic, either in the UK or in continental Europe. Here, though, if you're just going back from work in the US, Canada, Mexico, and you want to see some world-class pool, well, you'll be heartened to know this isn't the last match on table one today. We've got one more for you. And what a contest it promises to be. Joshua Filler against Tyler Steyer. USA versus Europe. With big Moscow Cup implications, certainly for Steyer. So, Filler, Steyer, heading your way around five or six minutes after the conclusion of this contest. He was trying to get the cue ball behind the five. He was asking a lot, to be honest. What's Carlo faced with here? Has he got enough pace? And it's the wrong line anyway. But the eight ball has blocked Oi from seeing this one. I think he's going to have to kick off the back rail up behind it. good effort wasn't it you could see the plan you could see what he was trying to achieve Carlo's gonna have to play a breakout shot unless the two ball goes past the six in the other corner and that would only matter if he felt he could draw over into that little corner of the table if not he's gonna go into these balls and make something happen maybe go forward into the rail then bump the six. Let's have a look. Can he finally close this match out? Yeah, that's the shot he's played. Nicely done. You just feel like one, one or two more good shots, and then this rack is all there to be taken. Yes, more intricacy needed here.
looking good now, Cole. Although, I will put in a disclaimer, it was looking good in the, the last rack before he went in off. Yeah, this is the shot where if it's going to go wrong for Oi, it will be now. As long as he can get on this five ball with an angle, just look where the six, seven, eight, and nine are sat. This would take a monumental effort to mess these up. This is the big shot coming up. And Carlo knows it. Good to me. He's fighting hard, isn't he? He's struggled a little bit today in the matches we've seen him play. He's playing most of his matches on the main tables. That's because he's the defending champion. Rightly so, he's earned that right. He doesn't want to give up his green jacket just yet. And on that, in goes the green six. Surely now, Naoki Oi's hopes hanging by a thread. <coughs> He's definitely been the better player for me, Carlo Biardo. Sometimes his break hasn't worked. He has scratched on the break. He had one glaring scratch from nowhere in the rack before this but generally speaking he's a deserved winner <laughs> Naoki Oi would love to win this US Open he'll have to wait at least one more year are we going to see a repeat champion well the the answer is maybe because Carlo Biardo moves into the sweet 16 with a 9-6 victory what about those stats Carl what do you see in those yeah, both players didn't break too well, didn't they? Similar stats there. Break and win the rack for Biardo. Ball's potted. Biardo's pretty much not a million miles off double the amount of pots. Both missed two pots. Fairly even match, really.